Okay, everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over uh, the hockey slate for this evening, uh, October 24th. Uh, I'm going to be using my uh, NHL sheets to kind of go through this. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us for the season, this is when I do a, a hockey breakdown, I use my sheets to do so. Um, I say it that way because the way you really should be building MME GPP lineups is using some kind of optimizer, whether it be Saber Sim or Roto or, or, or Roto Riders HQ or Fantasy Crunch or whatever. I happen to like Saber Sim best um, just because I think they capture correlation and upside a little bit better. Um, but when it comes to, to hand building, I think we can start by using our sheets uh, to, to construct lineups in this way. Um, it also gives you a sense for what to expect on the slate when you when you go through the plays in this particular fashion. So just to give you a kind of a, uh, again, a recap of what all this is, um, this is kind of an industry aggregate of all the projections that I have access to. Plus I have them kind of uh, weighted based on accuracy. In other words, I did about a year of, of analysis of projection models and how close they are to results and with different, you know, uh, different types of plays and things like that. And so it's not just, you know, uh, averaging them out. Sometimes there's a slate that has certain types of plays that other, that some models do better with and things like that. So I think I did a pretty decent job in coming up with my own interpretation of the industry aggregate. Um, and it's the same thing that's done for, uh, for ownership as well. Um, so uh, th that's where all this comes from. And so the the projection points are over here. The ownership projections are over here. And the sheets value score is my kind of interpretation of the, the combination of, of, of pure points per dollar analysis and just raw upside analysis. Um, point per dollar is in the green here. This is basically just, you know, projected points divided by slate salary. But sheets value score kind of combines these, you know, the, the idea of, of of high points per dollar plus high just raw points and comes up with, a, I think, a pretty decent way to rank uh, hockey players, basketball players, and pretty much all sports. So what I like to do is I like to start by uh, sorting this entire slate by sheets value score. Um, and I think that's the default for when you utilize my sheets on truedfs.com. And the first thing I will notice is that there's a real big standout at the uh, the right wing position, that being Mason Appleton. He's apparently just way too cheap at 2,500. He's showing up as an extremely strong value score. Um, it, you'll see that his ownership is kind of following suit, you know, getting solid 15%, but that's okay. So if you were going to build like a, a single entry lineup, I think you'd want to start with, 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 with Mason Appleton here. And then what I like to do is after – after finding kind of a standout like that, then I try to basically just visualize this, the, all these plays and see if I can find uh, multiple players from the same team because hockey is, is, is all about correlation and, and putting guys on the same team together and more to the point, put guy, putting guys on the same line together um, just because <laughs> the way the way uh, goals, assists, and things like that correlate in hockey is very, very pure. So you want to get as much of that as you can. So the first thing I will notice is that after this Winnipeg, uh, there is a Toronto play, Austin Matthews, which is really strong. But then you, it, it takes me a while to get down to the next Toronto guy. So where Austin Matthews may in and of himself be a decent play, uh, unless I'm going to use him as a one-off, he's probably not going to make my – main uh, you know single entry type build okay um now can you use them in a one-off well as they say legal minds may differ okay but as the best i can determine you really don't want to overspend not overspend you don't want to pay up for these one-offs in hockey i i it, from what i've what i've discovered and what i've researched and what makes sense to me is that i prefer to use the cheapos as the one-off um, and use the uh, the higher price guys as part of stack. So I don't think that even though Austin Matthews represents he represents a good play kind of in a vacuum, feels I'm probably gonna 
skew him for others uh, for other better plays. So now I'm looking at R Riot Nugent Hopkins. So he, on the other hand, he's much cheaper. So he's a really, really strong play. And it's really surprising that you can't, that, that the next best play is not until, um, is not until uh, down here, the next Edmonton guy, Connor McDavid. Um, so, so likewise, I think what that, while Ryan, Nugent Hopkins remains a good play, it would be great if you were able to stack him with some of these others. And it just doesn't look like Edmonton's as strong of a stack um, uh, as maybe some others will turn out to be. We'll get to that. What I do see is that Jack Campbell shows up as one of the top goalies here. So th that, that helps because you do, you know, it would be nice to correlate your goalie with your, with the players, not completely necessary, but, but it certainly helps because, you know, the more the, your team scores, the more likely it is you get the win as a goalie. Okay. Now, again, the, the, the fantasy points that goalies accrue is, is not as much predicated on wins as, as it is getting shots fired at them and then saving them. So uh, the correlation between players and goalies is not great, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's something that can break ties, let's put it that way. Um, so we're, we're looking for a kind of a stack here and, and, and and when you look here at the next kind of group, you kind of see where I think I'm going to want to start because you see Jack Eichel at 5,900 is the next best value. And then it only takes a little while to get down to like a whole bunch of other Vegas guys. So March Assault, Mark Stone, Petrangelo, like all of these guys are on the same team and they also rate to be in the top you know, 14, 15 values. So if I were going to single build the lineup, what I probably do is start with these guys. Start with Eichel, March Assault, Stone, uh, and P uh, Petrangelo. Now, again, it would be nice if these guys were all on the same line. So you have to kind of, you know, do your homework, go to you know, go to the sites and, and see where they are. Like Saber Sim actually lists, if I'm not mistaken, uh, what lines all these guys are. Let's, let's take a look at the... Um, What's his name at, at Vegas and see and see what's up. So let's pull up Vegas. We'll show players in this team. And they have, yeah, so Petrangelo's on the number one line. And then let's let's sort these by, I guess, by projection so we can see these guys. Uh, Eichel's on the number one line. Stone is on the number two line, but it's the first power play, play line and March Assaults here. So you have four guys from that main power play line together. So I think this is clearly the best stack um, is just to start with these guys. And you'll see that these guys are all really cheap. So you might even be able to get away with, with, with one of those expensive one-offs, you know, because the rest of this stuff is so cheap. As a matter of fact, you could find the fifth guy in this power play that would be Chandler Stevenson. I mean, you could do a full power play stack with these guys. And then you also get some even strength uh, stuff with Stone and Stevenson and even strength stuff with, with Eichel and Petrangelo. So I think those five guys look really, really strong to, to kind of start off your slate. And, I mean, to give you an example, if you want to build I'll, – I'll build one now just to see what that would look like. Let's go to NHL. Let's just pull up a – in the old lineup here. And we'll highlight this. So Eichel, Stevenson, March Assault, Stone, and Petrangelo, right? So if you put in a goalie, like, um, who did we say was the best goalie on the slate? Uh, the end of the goalie, right? Uh, Campbell. So if you do this, you have a lot of money that you could spend. So, like, for example, let's say you want to play that um, – uh, that cheapo, what was his name? The top, uh, Appleton. So if you put up Appleton, we're playing him last year a bunch at 2,500. Now, like you're really in business, you put 7,800, you have 7,800, man, you could play, you play McDavid as a one-off here. And maybe with that other, uh, whatchamacallit, Edmonton guy. And this would make a lot of sense. Um, the other thing, uh, as we go down the list here, you, you, you'd see that there was another Winnipeg guy um, along that you can play alongside of Mason Appleton. 
now it'd be Kyle Connor. So can't really build this whole lineup for you. But I mean, if you, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out, right? You put, you put Kyle Connor in here and then anybody you want, you know, uh, could fill out this lineup. So um, that's definitely one way you could play. Uh, another way, let's take a look and see if there's any other stacks that kind of stand out here. I guess the next one would probably be, I guess, Ottawa. You know what? I mean, at, at this point, you might want to play this Edmonton, you know, because you can afford it pretty easily. And we already know we have Nugent Hopkins and and and, and McDavid. And you just find someone else in that line to kind of fill that out, right? So if we were hand building, we know that this is the way we probably go. We would probably play, a, you know, the, a, a Vegas stack and then maybe some Edmontons or whatever it is. And, and probably Matthews in Toronto would probably wouldn't make it. But what I'd like to do is just for fun, run a Saberson bill to see if, if that reflects the kinds of lineups that, that Saberson would come up with because sometimes you get surprised about what they would actually, I want to say what they recommend. They're not recommending anything. You're, you're putting your inputs in. It's just an algorithm. So I'm uploading my customized projections here. It's got my ownership and you'll see that it's going to replace, right? Their ownership and things like that. Um, So let's build, say, 30 lineups, just to give you, let's build 50 lineups just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. We're going to use their default sliders, which are usually really good about you know, mixing ownership fade with correlation and things like that. And let's just see what they come up, what, what kind of lineups we generate. So it looks as though when you look at team stacks here, it's, it's not as much as we thought. Like here, you're getting a whole bunch of Dallas, you know? Like forty percent Dallas, twenty percent Toronto, and I'm only getting about twenty percent Vancouver. So I'd have to go back and check and see what's what's up. Um, getting all this Dallas, so it's funny, you know. And, and all it's doing is taking the inputs that I gave and and building the lineup. So it's taking from my projections, and you see, I don't even get Dallas till all the way. My first Dallas guy isn't until all the way here. I think the idea is that since their ownership is so low, that you got to give them a little bit extra credit. So that's why when it comes to building GPP NME lineups, I really recommend that you use Sabres or an optimizer of some kind to, to, to deal with all of those um, to deal with all of those um, all of those ownership fade scenarios. To deal with all that randomness that you need to to incorporate into your lineups. But I think that going through the slate the way we did. It gives us some good plays, you know? So if you want to do single entry, I think you should do what I said, you know, probably some combination, Vegas, Edmonton, something like that. But if you're playing GPPs and MME stuff, I mean, you, you want to, you know, I, I think you do want to use Saberson to kind of help you with, the, you know, with your builds. All right. That, that'll do it. Uh, um, uh, good luck, everybody. And I uh, hope somebody takes it down.